All right, so now we're going to cover some through the lock stuff really quick. Uh, through the lock is beneficial. A, it can be fast if we practice it often and we're proficient. And it obviously saves the integrity of the door versus tearing something up. Uh, if it's something as simple as an automatic alarm, we don't want to tear up a thousand dollar door just to check it out versus going through the lock. Also, if we go through the lock, it saves the integrity of our door. So we talk about, you know, fires being vent limited and obviously the more oxygen they can get, the hotter they're going to burn. If we just break the glass out of a door, we no longer can control that flow path. And so that thing's going to continue to get air. So going through the lock, we can actually shut that door and save our flow path if necessary. Here's a real life example from Houston. Uh, you can see the air just pulling into the structure. So commercial structure, they actually tried to do the right thing, go through the lock, or I think they might have even had a key. Um, but just that's the same thing as if we broke the glass, there'd be no way to protect that flow path. Uh, they were smart enough to put the door back up and block that flow path. And obviously if we break the glass, that's not an option. So another reason to go through the lock. So when it comes to commercial doors going through the lock, this is the locking mechanism that's gonna be on most of our locks. So it's pretty simple. There's a barrel that the key goes in, and then there's a latch on the backside that they can do from the inside, and it controls this, which latches our door. And you can see here how it goes into the side of a door. So here's our lock we were using, and here's one you can see the inside of the door. So uh, this is the mechanism, and then we'll pull the lock out, and we'll show how to open it up. All right, so we have a couple different options for pulling this barrel out to expose the locking mechanism. So as you can see here, it's just brass and it's threaded. So if we can get a hold of this, we can just unscrew it like a nut. So the only thing that holds this lock in is this little set screw you can see right here. So if we can unscrew this and just bend that set screw, like you see we've done on this side, the whole lock will come out and then it'll expose the mechanism. So the first way that we can unscrew this barrel is simply grabbing it with a pair of channel locks or some vice grips getting hold of it and just open it up and it'll pull out. All right, so we use the vice grips to pull the last one off. Sometimes there's locks like this one though, where it has this ring around the outside. So that's a tamper ring. So we can't get a hold of that lock and simply untwist it. So here's a solution for breaking one of those locks. All right, so get you a flat headed screwdriver. It helps if it's square shafted. We're actually just gonna take this and we're gonna put it in the keyhole and take a hammer and drive it in a little bit. Once it's good and secure, we're gonna grab our vice grips or something to grab a hold of the screwdriver, get the shaft, and then we can, once again, just like the last time, twist it out. And that's how we can defeat it if there's a protective ring around it. All right, third option, K-tool or R-tool. Either one will work on these locks. So the big thing to remember here is whichever direction we slide it on, that's the direction we need to pull. So if we go from the top, we're gonna pry up with our halogen. If we go from the bottom, we're gonna pry down. When we put these on, we're gonna make sure they're good, tight, and secure. We also don't wanna pound it too hard or we can literally shear that lock off. So we wanna pound it hard enough that those teeth grab into the brass of that barrel lock. Just put your halogen in there, give it a couple good taps. Now, since we went from the top, we're gonna to pry it up. All right, so now that we've got our lock pulled, we have to work the mechanism inside. So. The biggest thing to get these things open is obviously knowing how they operate. So this is the piece that obviously goes into the door frame that keeps it closed. And we wanna make that come down. So the way we make that come down, as you can see, there's a track here. So this little pin here has to come down, go across right there and then come back up. And that's what's gonna allow this to open. So how we're gonna operate that inside a door is what we're aiming for is we're aiming for this little round piece right here actually. It kind of looks like one of those like little watch batteries on its side. So we have to depress that, push it down, and then slide it over. So you can see right here, when we push down on it, that tab we were talking about goes down in the track and it just slides over. So if you think of this as a clock, on this particular one, we need to go from five o'clock to seven o'clock. If this lock was on the opposite side of the door, then we'd be going from seven o'clock to five o'clock. So they're always gonna go from five to seven or seven to five. So once again, take the 90 degree side of our tool, push down on the little round roller battery looking thing and just slide it over. All right, so some doors are not an actual lock that grips like we were talking about, it's just these spring loaded ones. It's kind of like a slam door with the slam plate. 
So these, when they shut, there's this little triangle piece you can see right back in here. So same thing, we're gonna go from five to seven or seven to five. So that we're gonna, get, we're gonna get behind it with our tool and pry it over. There's the triangle, pry it over, and it's spring loaded. And I'll just let it open up. All right, so we've pulled our lock, and once again, that can take us, you know, maybe 20, 30 seconds, and opening the door is pretty simple. So this door is a drain door, obviously. We have the five to seven, seven to five actual locking mechanism on this side. We have the spring-loaded slam door on this side. So once we have our lock pulled, say it's been about 20 seconds to get it off, I think so they come in here, five o'clock to seven o'clock, that one's unlocked. Come over here, get behind the little triangle spring-loaded piece, and our door is open. So with some practice, we can get doors open in a minute or less. And once again, save the integrity of the door, whether that's for the business owner or for our own good on a structure fire to keep unwanted air and oxygen from getting into our fires. All right, now we're gonna talk about pulling doorknobs. So a lot of times we need to get in these houses, especially when it comes to non-emergency lift helps, welfare checks. It's gonna be cheaper and easier to go through a doorknob. If that's all that's locked, we can pop that doorknob off and then get in their house real easy. Uh, yes, we can use a set of irons to do our traditional, you know, pry and pop it open, or we can use a rabbit tool. Um, hopefully we'll do the least amount of damage possible, but still someone's probably have to come in and fix that door jam, fix that trim, and a lot of times just popping a doorknob is a good option. So we're not saying this is the only option, but once again, just another tool in our toolbox. Make sure we know how to do this because it could come in handy. Uh, one thing to note when we're going to get through doorknobs, there is a version of doorknobs out there called a quick set, and this is what it is right here. If you all ever encounter a doorknob like this, it's got your normal doorknob and it looks like this that goes right in the middle. What we can do is take a hammer and a flathead screwdriver. If you just paint, pound behind here and pop this out, this little cap, all it's held in is by that little spring right there. That'll reveal that mechanism where we can get in there and, and operate it and open that door up. So if you ever encounter this kind of doorknob, it's called a quick set. Easiest way is just pop that part off versus popping the whole doorknob off. If we do want to take the whole doorknob off, we have a couple different options. Pipe wrench is a good one. We'll also demonstrate channel locks as well as a set of irons. So we all have a pipe wrench, whether it's in your boot bag or in your high-rise pack. Get your pipe wrench, put it around your doorknob, and just go ahead and twist. And it'll pop that doorknob off. All right, option number two, a pair of channel locks. It's even handier if you have these ones that have the curved teeth there. Get a hold of our doorknob, twist it off. All right, option number three, set of irons. Only thing is, our irons as they come, they may be a little narrow right here to fit over the shaft of that doorknob. So they may need to just knock this down just a little bit, open that up just wide enough to go over our doorknob. It's the way it'll work. Slide your fork in over your knob, put an ax or something like that behind it for a little leverage point, and we're just gonna pop it out. All right, so once we get our, do our doorknob taken off, you'll see in there there's a little tab, just like a little quarter inch wide little bar. That's what we need to turn to unlock this doorknob. So you can see right now, this doorknob's locked. Once we get our knob pulled off, get you a pair of needle nose pliers here. Grab that, give it just a quarter turn, and we'll unlock our doorknob. All right, we'll talk about pulling deadbolts real quick. Uh, when we go to pull deadbolts, uh, it's gonna be pretty tough, but it's dang sure possible, dang sure doable, something we should be good at. When we're pulling deadbolts, what we're trying to do is there's two screws, either number six or number eight machine screws that run through the back of these, and we're just looking to break those off. Uh, anytime we go to pull a deadbolt, we probably plan on there being some damage, whether that's pulling it with the K tool, because we're probably going to cause some damage to the door surrounding that deadbolt, or obviously if we go and take a rabbit tool, we push this door open, we're going to tear up the door jam and the trim behind it. So either way, we're going to do some damage, but here's just another option, something we should be pretty good at. Once again, when we go to pull these off, it's just like pulling commercial locks. Whichever way we approach our lock, that's the direction we're gonna pull. If we approach from the bottom, we're gonna pry down. If we approach from the top, we're gonna pry up. So take our, take our irons, set our tool, have a good strike. Strike. A lot of times, we can weaken those screws a little more if we'll give it just a real slight left and right rock, rocking motion, and then we'll pry down. We'll go left a little bit, to the right, and we'll go ahead and pull down. Now we got it off, take our screwdriver, manipulate that lock. All right, now we got our deadbolt pulled. You can see here, there's just a little rectangle hole, and all we're gonna do is take a flathead screwdriver, insert it into the hole there, 
And we can manipulate that deadbolt. Open it up. There we go.